Hey YouTube, it's ICU. I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving and welcome to the 115th episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. All right, now to start off before we begin, since the last episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors, I've made three new videos. So just be sure to visit all of those videos. I'll have links to them down below in the more info for additional chances to enter giveaways and also for some new information on giveaways. And the first one was my unboxing of Nintendo's all new Wii U. And for those of you that don't know, the Wii U is Nintendo's next generation gaming console. It has better graphics, it's faster in every aspect, and it also has a really interesting controller that has a 6.2 inch touch screen directly in the middle. So if you guys want to see my unboxing video for that, again, just be sure to check it out. Now I also did two other unboxings. The first one was of Google's Nexus 10 tablet, and the final unboxing was for Google's Nexus 4 smartphone. So if you guys want to see any of those videos, like I said, they'll be down below in the more info. Also, for additional information on any of the giveaways, I'll discuss those towards the end of this episode, so just be sure to stick around for that. All right, and first, I just wanted to discuss the jailbreak status for all current iOS-based devices. Before we do that, there are a couple of important differences between tethered jailbreaks and untethered jailbreaks that I really need to point out. So for those of you that don't know, a tethered jailbreak is essentially a jailbreak that relies on the assistance of a computer to boot the device up into its fully functional jailbroken state. Now, an untethered jailbreak, like the name suggests, does not rely on a computer. You can simply reboot the device anytime you want, and you won't have to rerun a certain part of a utility to, again, boot it into its fully functional jailbroken state. Now, yes, you can reboot a device that's jailbroken via a tethered jailbreak if you install what's known as a semi-tethered or a semi-untethered jailbreak on top of the tethered jailbreak through Cydia. And essentially what that does is it allows you to reboot your device with limited functionality and then if you want full functionality you would then have to plug it into your computer and rerun a certain part of the utility and in most cases that's Red Snow because again Red Snow is the primary jailbreak these days. So obviously an untethered jailbreak is preferred by most users because it's definitely less hassle because again you can reboot your device anytime you want. However, tethered jailbreak breaks are basically the backbone for jailbreaking right now. And the reason for that is because the dev team can easily update Red Snow to include new firmwares once Apple releases them for the devices that it supports. Now, unfortunately, Red Snow only really supports the iPhone 4, iPhone 3GS, as well as the fourth generation iPod Touch through a tethered jailbreak because of the Lime Rain exploit. And I'll explain that more in a second. But first take, for example, the 6.0.1 jailbreak. Now, Red Snow hasn't been officially updated to include support for 6.0.1, but because the exploit is still good, the Lime Rain exploit, you can use the old version of Red Snow and simply point it at the new 6.0.1 IPSW, and you will be able to jailbreak it on those devices. And I actually highlighted that in my video, and I went into depth on that, and I also showed you guys how to install a semi-tethered or a semi-untethered jailbreak on top of that. Just be sure to check it out if you, again, have an iPhone 4, iPhone 3GS, or a fourth generation iPod Touch. Now let me explain why the jailbreak doesn't include the newest devices. Now that's because it uses, like I said, the Lime Rain exploit, which was discovered in 2010 by George Hotz or GeoHot. Now at the time, that Lime Rain exploit included all of the current iOS-based devices, and the latest ones were the A4-based devices, again being the iPhone 4, the iPod Touch 4th generation, and the original iPad, which of course is no longer supported by Apple in iOS 6. So that's why that isn't included in the jailbreak. And because the Lime Rain exploit is a boot ROM-based exploit, the only way for Apple to patch it for the devices it supports is to actually release updated hardware, which is exactly what they've been doing. So of course they've since patched the Lime Rain exploit with newer iPhones, iPads, and iPod touches. And unfortunately, once Apple stops supporting the iPhone 4, iPhone 3GS, and the fourth generation iPod touch in newer iOS releases, tethered jailbreaks will start to become a thing of the past unless major advancements are made in the world of jailbreaking. Now recently, POSIX Ninja, the former leader of the Chronic dev team, tweeted out that he's working on something bigger than just an iPhone 5 jailbreak. And when a follower asked him what could be bigger than an iPhone 5 jailbreak, he said he's working on exploiting the boot ROM and obtaining decryption keys for A5, A5X, A6, and A6X devices. Now for those of you that don't know, those are the processors that Apple's current iOS devices are built with. And of course, they include the iPhone 4S, the iPad 2, the 5th generation iPod Touch, the iPad Mini, the iPhone 5, as well as the 4th generation iPad. So all of the devices that are currently supported by Apple that are on iOS 6 or that can upgrade to iOS 6 or even 6.0.1 or 6.1 once it's released, 
POSIX Ninja is working to get a boot ROM exploit that again will hopefully jailbreak all of the current devices. Now while this would be a tethered jailbreak, if he actually succeeds, then once newer firmwares are released, all of those devices will be able to be jailbroken practically instantly. So it would be the same situation with the current tethered jailbreak for A4 based devices and the iPhone 3GS. And almost a week later, POSIX Ninja tweeted out that he's working on something to ensure that jailbreaks will be around for a long time. So this does mean that he's working on getting a boot ROM exploit ready for those devices. So clearly this is some great news for the jailbreak community and hopefully POSIX Ninja will complete his work relatively soon and will have a jailbreak for all current devices. And just be sure to stay tuned, I'll keep you guys fully updated on the jailbreak situation, what POSIX Ninja is working on, as well as a possible untethered jailbreak. Were you experiencing iMessage and or FaceTime issues earlier this week? If so, you weren't alone. Apple actually posted an acknowledgement statement on their official iCloud system status page that essentially said that a few of their services were down. So this is bound to happen from time to time. Of course, I will keep you guys notified on best tech info. So just be sure to check out my site if you're having issues with Apple services to see whether or not it's just you or whether Apple's services are actually down. Now for all of you Wii U owners out there who are having issues connecting your new console to your Wi-Fi network, I actually wrote an in-depth tutorial on best tech info for how to fix it. So what I've detailed in my post is actually a mix of what I've found through various forms, through testing myself, and also from what various Nintendo technical support representatives have told me to do with my system. So I did figure out a solution that will fix practically all errors related to connecting to a Wi-Fi network. All right, moving on with Apple's next version of OS X, presumably scheduled for release sometime in 2013. It's likely they'll continue to add new features to bridge the gap between iOS and OS X. And according to a new report from 9to5Mac, early versions of OS 10.9 are reportedly displaying integration for Siri and Apple's new mapping service. I'm sure as most of you are aware, OS 10.8 Mountain Line introduced Siri Dictation, which essentially allows for speech to text input. Now similar to the third generation iPad, which started out with just dictation, it's likely that OS X will get some form of Siri in the near future, and hopefully that will be with the release of 10.9. As far as Maps is concerned, it's unclear whether or not OS 10.9 will include a standalone app for their new mapping service because the report simply suggests that the new operating system will include the option for developers to integrate the mapping service into their own applications. But of course that doesn't mean that there won't be a standalone maps application. So just be sure to stay tuned to this series. I will keep you guys fully updated on the status of Apple's next major operating system. All right, next up, according to GigaOM, Google is looking to further compete with Apple by introducing an open AirPlay alternative. It will also be different because it will allow data to stream in either direction direction, meaning information would be able to be displayed on different phones and tablets. All right, and finally, according to a thread on Mac Rumors forums, as well as an official post from Mac Rumors, AT&T seems to be extending the FaceTime over cellular feature to all customers, including those who are grandfathered in to their unlimited data plans. So numerous customers are stating that the option to enable FaceTime over cellular is automatically checked through their settings application. Now, this might not be the case for a lot of users, as it seems that AT&T will have a rather slow rollout for this now two-month-old feature. All right, now let's discuss the giveaways. As far as the iPad mini giveaway is concerned, that has concluded. A winner will be selected shortly and we will announce it. Now, for the fifth generation iPod Touch giveaway, the winner still didn't contact me back. This is the second winner, so now I'm moving on to the third winner, and I'm not really going to leave any time for new entries, so I've randomly selected a new winner, and if they don't contact me by the next episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors, I mean, we'll just have to try and select another one, but the winner's name is currently on the screen now, so if they don't contact me through the message I sent them, I'll let you guys know by the next episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. Same thing goes for the winner of my Call of Duty Black Ops 2 giveaway. Their name is on the screen right now. All right, and I will be holding a new giveaway very soon. If you guys want me to, just be sure to rate this video up and leave a comment down below in the comment section letting me know what you guys want. So the options will either be a Nexus 7, Nexus 10, fourth generation iPad, or the iPad mini. Again, just let me know down below in the comment section. Now for the question of the day, let me know what you guys think about POSIX Ninja's work to exploit the boot ROM as well as obtain decryption keys for the A5, A5X, A6, and A6X. Again, just let me know down below in the comment section or on Best Tech Info. Also, to be updated every time I release new videos, just be sure to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and add me to one of your circles inside of Google+. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.